The UK's second 5G Spectrum auction is well underway and it's of interest to me for several reasons. Not just the technical interest side of it or the end user point of view, but also because I made some predictions around possible outcomes, including onto social media. And therefore I am actually quite invested in, in the outcome, especially as actually some of these predictions made their way into talks with mobile network operators around their network strategy. Anyway, the principal stage of the auction ended on the 17th of March after only three days of bidding and the outcome of that was that EE3 and O2 got 2 by 10 megahertz of 700 megahertz each as I predicted on social media in the end and EE also got 20 megahertz of SDL as well in 700 megahertz and then EE, O2 and Vodafone each got 40 megahertz of spectrum in 3.6 to 3.8 gigahertz as well. Now with the principal stage over the spectrum auction process then moved into assignment stage which is where we are now and in assignment the operators have to decide what actual frequencies their spectrum sits in and this is very important given the operators existing holdings in the NR band 78 range because operators want their spectrum to be one contiguous lump and given the layout of the spectrum already that was not going to be possible without a great deal of reallocation so the specific stage that the operator in now is the negotiation part of assignment which is where they have to negotiate amongst themselves how best to allocate the N78 spectrum that they have to best make use of their existing holdings combined with their new holdings. Now this has already been going on for some time starting on the 25th of March and there's a good chance it will actually go on for a fair bit longer given the importance of it and also the quite substantial range of different interests between the different operators dependent on their existing holdings, deployment, wishes and hardware capabilities. So what are the next steps and what does the future hold in the short to medium term? Well clearly the negotiation part of assignment has to reach conclusion such that the operators know what frequencies they can launch their new services on. After that, 700 megahertz enlivenment should be very rapid because EE, O2 and 3 have all been deploying 700 megahertz capability onto their network for quite some time, which was rather quite a strong clue for the predictions. I mean, other factors were featured in those, um, in the basis for those predictions, but Hardware deployment does tend to be a relatively reasonable predictor. In the case of O2, that LO9 coverage footprint gives a reasonable proxy for areas that are likely to have 700 MHz capability because their LT900 MHz is typically launched using triple band radios that are capable of 700, 800 and 900 megahertz. In the case of Ericsson, ERS2238s so and Nokia AHP MDAs. Meanwhile, three 700 megahertz, well, their Ericsson phase eights have ERS2460s, which are capable of 700, 800 and 900 megahertz. But of course, three won't be using the 900 capability. And then in EE's case, they have been deploying 700 megahertz capability in their Huawei, Ericsson and Nokia zones. Clearly for 3 and EE, the 700 megahertz gives them a massive increase in their low band capability. In 3's case, tripling it and in EE's, it's actually more than triple if you include the 
supplementary downlink, although device support or lack thereof is clearly an issue in that case. In terms of the N78 spectrum, clearly the operators EE, O2 and Vodafone end up with significantly more spectrum going in the case of EE, they end up with double and the same for O2 with Vodafone going from 50 to 90, so it's not quite double but nearly double. So again, quite substantial increases in spectrum. However, how it will be deployed and the ramifications of that obviously depends a bit on the actual frequencies and whether they end up with contiguous or discontiguous chunks of spectrum for which we'll have to wait for the results of the negotiation. But nonetheless, what a time to be alive. And sorry if this has been a little bit rambly, but it's quite an interesting topic and one that will hopefully bring a lot of excitement and improved service going forward.